that was great timing. As I said, that everyone took a sip of something caffeinated. I'm assuming it was tea and tea uh, for both of you. Yes, I'm here joined by my friends, Allison, Chris, I'm Gary. We're binary jazz. That's it. The hosts you know, of Spin Jazz Con. Ooh, yeah. I guess we actually do have something to, to announce today, don't we? I mean, we announced it last week, so it's like, oh, well, never mind. Go listen to last we week's can, episode. Wait, we can keep announcing it. We can continue <laughs> no. to announce it. Um, no, please, please rewind a, an episode. I did make Those a page were... uh, on the website. Uh, it's like, <laughs> it's binaryjazz.us slash bin jazz conf. Pulls right hyphen, off the top, hyphen right? 2021. Oh, oh, this is, this is, uh, <laughs> you're pretty optimistic about this. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm already wrangling people to, uh, to join us. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> this is actually going to be pretty rad. I'm excited about the, uh, the idea. Um, Some of the questions were, do I really have to send an email about what I'm talking about? <laughs> and I, I was fully like, intend yeah. to do that today. To send just, an email. Because, just because I've invited about. you personally does not mean you have to escape protocol. <laughs> yeah. And then That's I explained it basically so we know who's showing up. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm 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 bouncing back and forth. So if we think if, if there are going to be people people that that join that aren't besides us, then I have a scheduling conflict on the seventeenth. We should probably do this off recording. Um, <laughs> we can figure we'll, that we'll out. Figure we'll, figure, out. we'll work out the details. Yeah. We'll deal with it. It's either the tenth or I the seventeenth. I didn't want to figure it out. I did want to say, in lieu of. Um, Oh, this doesn't look very cool on camera, does it? No. What is no, that? It, there's not it's, enough contrast. Like, yeah. Well, okay. It's it's oh, that's cool. It's a it's a coaster that has a cutout for your nose, so that's when you put it up to your face, it looks like an animal's mouth. But on camera, it doesn't look anywhere near as impressive. In person, it just looks funny, you know. <laughs> so I have like a chicken beak. Chicken. I can barely beak. see it. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Maybe if I. It's actually more Absolutely. funny if it's just a piece of paper hanging from your nose. See, yeah. I have uh, I have a mask, but if I was to wear it, then you wouldn't be able to hear me. <laughs> Good. I also have a hat that goes along with it. I was going to say, what I was going to say is in lieu of um, conference registration uh, fees, we would very much like you to find somewhere locally where you can help some other humans out. Yes. Yeah, that's nice. There's no like conference t-shirt or anything because we can all buy our own t-shirts. We all don't need another t-shirt. I actually, I'm really happy with this t-shirt I'm wearing today. I feel like I'm showing off like a blank t-shirt. Um, Rhonda and I went to uh, Michael's, which is a um, arts and crafts store. Mm -hmm. And I walked on the aisle, I'm like, they just have like plain t-shirts here. And like, yeah, no one's told me this well, my I entire mean, like, life. <laughs> hypothetically, you're supposed to do something with the t-shirt, but. I, I am, I'm wearing it. <laughs> So I got like three, I got a purple one, I got whatever color this is, and I'll be surprised when I remember what the third one is. is it, <laughs> sorry, sorry, is it not blue? What, why did we? I don't know, it's like a- Like a blue gray, blue. Cadet, cadet blue. That's it, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I can just buy blank t-shirts at an arts and crafts store, like, and they're like three bucks. I don't care how long this shirt lasts for three bucks. Like, actually, that's not true. I'll wear the shirt forever. I mean, I got some like stupid like WordCamp shirts I've been wearing now that are, I mean, pretty soon I won't be able to wear them because they will have extra holes and then I'll have to chuck them. But, but for three bucks, I can replace it with a blank shirt. My goodness, it's it's crazy. I can buy five shirts for what I pay for a WordCamp registration and get one T-shirt, and I don't have to go to a WordCamp. And this time you just got to go to a Michaels. Yeah, well, I mean, we were out. Like it was, it, my, it was when my parents were in town. So Rhonda and I were out, and, and I really didn't care where we went because we were hanging out with each other. So it was fun. I love. But Michael. we like walked in this aisle, and I'm like, "Wait, are you serious? Like, what in the world? <laughs> it's right and next it's beautiful. to the puff. right next to the puffy paint. <laughs> it is, yeah. I have no idea why. <laughs> what would you do with that? <laughs> um. So. Head to your local Michaels. I love Curious. craft stores because they plant the seed that I'm capable of anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about computers. <laughs> and then I get home with the supplies and go, what am I doing? 
Aaron made some I, pretty uh, bitchin' uh, fairy wings uh, for, for Halloween. Oh yeah, what are your families, if they are going as anything? What are they? Well, I, I've got a Plague Doctor costume. Aaron mm -hmm. built uh, some fairy wings and like uh, like a flower hat thing. Mm -hmm. um, and Lila is a vampire. She's got some teeth that kind of work. Uh, you know, like the actual teeth that fit, mm -hmm. um, which I'm sure everyone listening could hear me, you know. Uh, <laughs> we knew. We knew exactly uh, what you were saying. And Gavin is some kind of like cyborg dude. Um, he built this uh, this arm contraption that has like this uh, string, this like solid LED string light thing that blinks. Um Ooh. And uh, he's he was working on a mask last night. Um, nice. Um, there's a popular show in our house right now uh, called Bluey. It's an Australian cartoon. Um, it's a family of dogs. So Charlotte. Is one decided, of them blue. Uh, yep, two of them are blue out of four. Fifty percent of them are blue. Um, that adds up genetics wise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. I think blue is maybe a recessive gene and dog color, I don't know. Um, it's, it's actually, of the cartoons that have been popular in this house in the last decade, uh, it's one of the better ones. It's really good. Um, the dad uh, is uh, so wholesome with the kids, which I love. Anyway, I'm the dad from Bluey, whose name is Bandit. And around it, we went to uh, Michael's to get t-shirts. I have a blue shirt that she painted his face on. And Charlotte has like a little dress and Katie has a little dress and Rhonda has a long sleeve shirt, so, and Tyler is, um, oh God, he's going to kill me if I don't remember this. Is he listening? Some, it's a race card. Oh yeah, that's true. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> right. Nothing to worry about. Well, maybe in like, you know, 20 years, you know, he'll yeah. be like, oh, weird, my dad had a podcast. How did I not know about that? And then he'll find this episode. Uh, he's and then Richard he will Petty. not kill you because he won't remember what he was either. <laughs> no, he's Richard. Oh, oh, are you? No, he's, he will remember. He's. That's, that's kind of how he rolls. He's, he's almost photographic memory. Richard Petty, uh, who's a race car guy, uh, has like a big like hat and boots and he's made himself like a belt buckle and he's got like a denim shirt with a logo on it's, it's in this area, there will be a handful of people that recognize it and will be over the moon and everyone else will be like, yeah. Oh, everyone will right. shower him you're, with candy when they recognize You're a cowboy. Him. Yeah, there's like five <laughs> or six people that recognize are gonna be soaked and everyone else will be like, great, I'm a cowboy or something. You know? It's fine, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Yep. I have to rake tomorrow. Um, rake. I raked, uh, I guess it wasn't, maybe it wasn't last weekend, two weekends ago, and then it was fine. And then Wednesday, um, the leaves were just like, whoop. Um, but there's still so much green around too. So half the trees were like, whoop. But I can't see my driveway. It, you can't tell where the driveway turns into grass. It's, it's that dense. Uh, so I get a workout this tomorrow. Oh, I have a walk I'm doing tomorrow too. Hmm. I'm going to be tired by Sunday. It's all right. So this part of the show is where we uh, find out what the topic is. Maybe. Chris and I, maybe. Debate. Debate? Maybe it's not the right word. I'm gonna spell the topic because I don't know how to pronounce it and I keep messing it up when I practice. I wanna get everyone else's opinions. Okay. P-H-R-O-N-T-I-S-T-E-R-Y. P-H-R-O-N-T-I-S-T-E-R-Y. Frontisserie. Okay. Um, frontisserie. Not frontisserie. <laughs> oh, frontisserie. Yeah, tisserie. I think it's front, a. Front. Uh, uh, I think it's a long O for another reason that I want to be. Fron. Frontisserie. No. Well, you're wrong. If you spell it phonetically. Frontisserie. <laughs> frontisserie. Oh, Anyway, I've been, I've been walking around the house reciting it to myself and being like, well, now I just have no idea. <laughs> well, I mean, it has a, no a, meaning a, anymore. A, front, a frontistry <laughs> is obviously where the frontists come from. 
<laughs> you you build you build the frontists in the frontistry. It's like a distillery where you distill alcohol. It's a frontistry. Huh? You make yeah, it's hard to argue with that, isn't it? It's pretty hard to argue with that. Um, I think it's like a sandwich shop. <laughs> But it's like very specific sandwiches that probably you wouldn't get other places. It's not like just like a deli. Yeah, yeah it's the most, like a, a really rare type of sandwich. Yeah, frontists <laughs> specifically. I remember uh, when I was young, uh, I in high school, I would go to, uh, I took um, French horn lessons from uh, one of the French horn players in the Florida Orchestra down in Tampa, St. Petersburg area. Uh, and so it was like an hour drive from my house to get to lessons. And it was like three of the four French horn players in my high school went and took lessons from her um, on Saturday mornings. So like I woke up Saturday morning and drove down, did a lesson, blah, blah, blah. And then um, um, we would often drive back, but like uh, together. God, where am I going with the story? Oh, we stopped at the sandwich shop. That's where I'm going with the story. We stopped at the sandwich, sandwich shop. Um, every like pretty much every time because it was like a vegetarian place um but they had one sandwich that was not vegetarian and it was a tuna sandwich um yeah i know and and so i had like i don't know i was i was, I was a pickier eater then but i still had like all sorts of stuff on the menu i tried all sorts of stuff but i kept coming back to the silly tuna sandwich because it was the best tuna i've ever had and i don't know why i haven't had tuna that good in a long time but i'm not sure why the vegetarian place had the best tuna sandwich and i don't know like what makes it maybe tuna it wasn't sandwich, like, really the best. tuna it might not have been. They, <laughs> maybe it was like tuna in quotes and I just missed that on the menu. You I ever know. had like chickpea tuna? I haven't, no. Oh, it's pretty good. I, haven't. I mean, well, I don't know. I, Someone who, yeah. Yeah. I haven't had tuna in like 20 something years. So. <laughs> it did, like, when I think tuna sandwich, like I think of like my mom like opening a tin and like, you know, yeah. I don't know, throwing relish and mayonnaise in. And it doesn't strike like, me as a angrily. restaurant, a restaurant thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, well, maybe that's why it was good was because it was made with like, you know, I was going to say some care. Like I'm not like besmirching my mom's tuna mashing or whatever she did when she mixed. No, but sandwiches always, with it. Yeah. sandwiches and salads always taste better when other people make them. That's just a, that's a fact. Yeah. Why? What is that? We need to, we need a name for that phenomenon. What is that <laughs> called? That, Cause like there's a, there's several things that happen that way, like sandwiches and salads for sure. Um, I think when someone else makes your bed, it feels nicer to lay into. That's the same phenomenon. Um, like someone cleans the car, like it feels nicer and cleaner than when you did it yourself. That's true. Maybe it's because mm. it's like you don't you don't look behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. So it's like the Wizard of Oz phenomenon. <laughs> That's a great name for it. The Wizard of Oz phenomenon. Yeah. So I now realizing that, like I want to find opportunities to 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 make people experience that phenomenon. I need to make the bed a lot more often than I do. Usually Rhonda beats me to it. Last person out makes the bed. That's the, uh, mm. the general rule. <laughs> well, then I'll never make the bed. <laughs> no, I was trained to make the bed because when I went to boarding school, you had to make your bed and clean your room every morning. So like they do room checks. And if your room wasn't up to par, then you'd get work hours or whatever. So I just- I don't think I knew you went to boarding school. Yeah. I'm a mystery. I'm a mystery wrapped in an enigma. <laughs> yeah. Was that like just a normal thing or was that like, were you being punished or? Um, I wasn't not being punished, but I wasn't having a good time at home. And I mm. don't think everybody thought a change of scenery would suit me. And I don't yeah, know that's a nice they, way of saying like we're fed up and we need a break. Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they thought a Catholic school would be good for this for this rebellious teen. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, that only fixes things happen everyone. When you go to Catholic school. You come out like not a Catholic, or you or you join the priesthood. I mean, there's only two options. Like you don't you don't remain a Catholic if you go to Catholic school. I feel. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, well, you remain a Catholic, Catholic if you go to, into the priesthood. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I know several Catholic priests. So I'm pretty sure not Catholic anymore. It's just their job, you know. <laughs> but yeah, to answer, actually, your question, to answer your question, I went to boarding school for the last three years of high school. Hmm. Dang. 
I'm thinking through my last three years of high school and if I'd gone to boarding school. I mean, I came home for holidays and stuff. It wasn't like a three year solid stint. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Summers and holidays. Yeah, yeah. 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 I once, I, I, somehow I, my dad knew someone whose daughter was in boarding school in an area we were, I was traveling with him in. And uh, I don't know if he was trying to set me up or what, but I I Mm. had to take her out to a hockey game. Had to. Um, It, (laughs) neither one of us were happy. We were both just like, so like, let's, let's just, let's clock our time. Let's get, let's get through this. <laughs> I, I could drive. She couldn't. I don't know what the deal was. It was weird. It was so bad. It was a minor league hockey game. And then I'm like, all right, cool. I, I wasn't into hockey. I don't think she was either, but I don't. Yeah. Why a hockey game? Do you know, I don't think I've ever been to a hockey game. Um, you should go. There's some good people yeah. watching. I've been to hockey games. I I don't know. There was so so I was from the Bay Area, so there's the San Jose Sharks. I don't know if I ever went to a Sharks game. But then there was like a minor league hockey team that I got into briefly and I went to a couple of their games. Mm-hmm. Matches. Are they games or are they matches? They're probably matches. I have no idea. I don't like know. That's, see, that's the thing is that I question my own, my own declaration because I was like, surely I must have gone to like an Anaheim Ducks game at some point, right? Well, maybe, but if it wasn't memorable, like, who cares? Does it count? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I, I know that say I went to Estevez there. Then no. <laughs> I know that I definitely went to a couple Fair. arena football games. Yeah. So I was about to say, like, every sport has a very distinct crowd. You know. Yeah. Yeah, um, arena football. I, and I was going to say, arena football and hockey are like, they're a Venn diagram that's a circle. It's <laughs> it's really fascinating. Like, there's people that are like, the people that are up in the glass banging the glass are the same people that are banging the boards at the, the arena football games. Like, it's, it's, and I feel like half of them are probably dentists for some reason. I don't know <laughs> what that's about. It must be like, it's like, a, like an affordable ticket to be front row. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. It's like, it's people that are like, Working a job that's like a little bit above, you know, like middle class, like high end middle class, right? Can that's afford season never... tickets to like a small market event like that. My, maybe I'm just. My yeah, parents are coming out. My parents are coming out to Salt Lake for uh, New Year's ish, and there is a Warriors versus Jazz game uh, here, so they got they wanted to go because they wanted to see you know, the Warriors play away game, whatever. Which is basketball, right? Basketball. Yes. Okay. Basketball. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Just for anybody yeah. who's for any, curious. For, for all the people, all the listeners that, that. Yeah, we've that, pivoted to a different yeah. sport. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, I haven't actually been to a jazz game since moving here like 20 years ago. So I figured, you know, eh, I, I don't, I don't care that much about basketball, but like, I feel like it's my duty as a, as a Utah to like sure. go to a single jazz game just to say that I did, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I know the types of people that go to jazz games. So like I expected the, the tickets to be like, you know, fairly reasonable. Uh, he forwarded the, the thing that had, they were like the receipt that had our seats uh, and had the, how much they were. Uh, I knew it was a lot more than I expected it to be. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was just like, I, I think you'll be surprised. Yeah, it was, it was, it was more, it was more. It's just the cachet of, because like it was the same as the reason I never saw Raptors or Maple Leafs, Maple Leafs. I always say it wrong. It's Maple Leafs, but I think that's not right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because tickets were like, I don't know, three or $400 a piece. And I just was like, I can't. Yeah. Like for like, for like upper, upper echelon, like not good seats. Um, and the thing about the Maple Leafs is that they lose every year. So it's not even like, it's not, not even, even like worth seeing. Yeah. I'm not like seeing the Lakers or something like, I'm not seeing like a team that's like got, got something going on. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, my dad, my dad also said that they've got a 49er game like that following Sunday that they're probably going to sell the tickets for. And I, I, you know, those tickets are probably several hundred dollars uh, even for like, and, and like he's described the seats. They're like literally like, I don't know, three, four, maybe five rows this year from the top. <laughs> like, 
whoo like yeah. you need you need to get like a kleenex to for the nosebleeds like it's uh yeah um but yeah i mean he was on a he was on a they have they've had season tickets for a couple of years and they were on like a wait list he was on he joined a wait list when they were good uh when they were hitting super bowls it all it took, full circle. yeah it, it 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 was like 10 years or something uh before before his name finally came up in the list um I would go to Jags games and they were, I think I would pay like 40 bucks. Oh, that's because I would buy from scalpers because it was Jacksonville and there were empty seats. Never mind. That's not valid. I have no idea what seats cost at a Jacksonville Jags game. <laughs> the the NASCAR races though, like Jacksonville Jags was rule. Five, Sorry, we're uh, watching we're rules. watching a good place uh with I uh, love uh, with Jason the, with the kids. We were watching the yeah. good place with the kids and yeah, he he just got married to uh to janet and his last vow was uh, the last part of his poem was jacksonville jack horse rule <laughs> um that that character was so beloved uh when i was in jacksonville the first like when it was first came out uh i mean it was like they were absolutely picking on jacksonville and jacksonville was like loving every second it was amazing <laughs> it was, like, it was so love, good we just love being involved <laughs> there was it was the first playoff game that jacksonville had had in like 12 years or something like that. And so that character was actually at the playoff game. Um, and people were just chanting Bortles because because <laughs> there's there Jacksonville is is uh, uh, top 10 swamp cities in Northeast Florida is what Jason refers to it as. And like everyone wore that as a badge of honor. It's fantastic. It's top such a weird city. Swab cities? Swamp, swamp cities. Swamp cities, okay. Yeah, Northeast <laughs> Florida. Yeah, it's like- What's a swamp? <laughs> It's it it, it 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 so fit the mentality of Jacksonville, and I don't think people realize that like like they're making fun of Jacksonville, and like Jacksonville doesn't know that. Like no, Jacksonville knew that and loved it. It was it's just it was we're that kid that needed attention. I say we. I don't live there anymore. I it's still I, I miss you. that weird like yeah. thing because no city I'm in now like no one knows about. So that's cool. <laughs> so that's cool. It's because nobody knows anything about most cities like there's like one there's like one detail uh there's... about about like places that people like remember some places even maybe not all places because like i don't know that i could tell you anything about north carolina just as a as a whole unit but like yeah. and then there's florida like florida just has all the things like there's... like there's everyone like can name at least stuff. one florida man thing that they read at some point like oh florida man brings an, an alligator into a convenience store and holds up yeah. the the cashier like like i'm just making that up but i'm i'm guaranteed that if you did a google search for florida man brings a, uh, an alligator into a convenience store and sticks and like holds them up you know, you know that you're going to find an article about that <laughs> We talked about the alligator in the convenience store that was near me in Florida, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. I he was not using it to hold up the convenience store. He was just right. an alligator in with him. Yeah. But I, I don't think that would be a stretch, you're absolutely right. No, no, not at all. Um yeah. Um I, I uh, guess the I get the, it's I, America's the, home for racing. It's where the Charlotte Motor Speedway yeah, okay. is. But I don't actually live in Charlotte. Yeah. So how does that work? It's the Charlotte Motor I, Speedway. Uh, I I always North get North Carolina. I always get the the so I've heard that uh, you can't buy caffeine in Utah. Um, yeah, is that true? No. Okay. <laughs> I was like, it's definitely not because I definitely was. There are lots <laughs> of Starbucks now. Now I will say that uh, it is written uh, somewhere in the Book of Mormon that basically anything that is considered a stimulant uh is uh frowned upon uh that includes caffeine cigarettes alcohol whatever most uh latter-day saints that i know uh and that's a fairly you know narrow uh group um do not uh like conveniently ignore that particular part of doctrine <laughs> Like yeah. the, definitely, definitely. I mean, maybe not the alcohol, and probably not the smoking. But there are a lot of smokers, and there's a lot of drinkers, uh, and like midnight ev- I know almost everyone I know drinks drinks coffee. Maurice Cowboys, I'm yeah. aware. Um, all named Maurice. No, this I don't know any Maurices. 
I'm entertaining myself. I don't, you know, whatever. What and there's no about. pompatus of uh, love. The, uh, but that's, that's like a deeply rooted thing in the religion that Mormonism forks from ignoring scripture, right? Like, it's like, it just doesn't fit like what I want to do. So I'm going let's, to ignore it. Let's take, let's take this very delicately uh, navigated description of a particular aspect of Mormonism. And then we're just going to slam some assumptions on top of it and just like <laughs> alienate anybody that might identify as that uh, who might be listening. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> ignoring oh no I, I, I my think, intent is not to alienate i would love to have a conversation i think i, I still th consider myself part of the christian I, church but I, definitely not what the way it works in america i think it's true for for any uh group uh any sort of religious group um maybe not any any western christian religious denomination uh i would say that that's probably equally true for like ignoring ignoring the parts of, of scripture or doctrine that don't seem convenient. Yeah. Doctrine is tricky. You because know, like in my blended uh, garment here, you know, I, I took a I'm left handed. A, so I'm immediately like out of this game. <laughs> I, uh, in You're college, I mean, it's obvious. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, I took a, in college, I took a, um, uh, a postmodernism class uh and the teacher was a catholic uh an irish catholic and he talked about catholicism and religion because it's sort of like it's sort of a postmodernist ish uh idea and he talked about specifically how catholicism is about believing the the literal truth of the of the bible and that means that, and so he was talking about how Catholics hold in their head simultaneously the actual belief that Jesus literally like rose up out of his, out of like being dead and just started walking around and also simultaneously believing that it's a metaphor um, and how like he believes nothing in the Bible, but also simultaneously believes everything because that's, and like, um, and that's, that's uh I don't know where I was going with that, but it did. <laughs> um, but that, that was just that this idea, and he got a lot of other the, Redlands as a school. Uh, there was a religious studies program, and I think a lot of religious studies majors uh, went to that class because he was teaching it. And the school, the the city itself, and the surrounding area was fairly conservative and fairly like religious, and so he got there was a lot of students that were pissed. <laughs> And would argue with him about like believing literal truth versus not versus meta like and like he would be like oh no i totally agree with you but you're also wrong <laughs> yeah but I, I, like i think hilarious <laughs> it's beautiful and i think that if we if we look at it we say uh i look at my neighbors um across the street who are members of the uh first baptist church here in town which is um anything you thought of when you heard first baptist church is probably correct like they don't wear masks uh by and large, the pastor is talking against vaccinations, et cetera, et cetera. Several of them went down to Texas to um, help enact legislation uh, uh, for banning abortion. I mean, it is it is as disgusting as you can imagine. Uh, I mean, I'll just call it that, what it is. Um, on the same token, um, I, I know my neighbors and they're lovely people and their worldview is this, you know, it's this, this blinders mentality because it's, it's all they've grown up with and they can't imagine anything outside of it. Um, and they're not, you know, they're, I don't think that they're intentionally uh, hateful people. They're just so limited in, yeah. in imagination. And, um, and I, I've, I have no idea what to do with that. Like Rhonda asked me, like, don't you think differently of them? I'm like, well, no, but I, I, my heart aches for them. Like, I wish they could see themselves as other people see them uh and then that i say that and then that causes me to invert and be like fuck like what what do what do people see in my bizarre <laughs> definitions of <laughs> humanity and what we're doing and all that and uh and then i have to go for another long walk <laughs> and, uh, and, and yesterday is, i was i was wrestling with that i was gonna say i have the answer to that Okay. Yesterday, the answer to that question was 
Um, I've been walking in the morning. It's been too dark, except for last Friday. It was not dark because it was midday. And uh, I've been seeing the deer lately. And yesterday I was like in this like thing where I was just like wrestling with that particular concept of like, I see them and my heart aches for them. But what do people see? Where are my blinders, right? Uh, and there were the deer just standing on an empty lot down a hill. Uh, and it just made me stop, take a breath and be like, who gives a shit? It doesn't matter. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Like right, what I have right now, like in this, like that little three minute window where I just stood there on the side of the road and watched the deer and they watched me was this like, I was emptied of, of, of Gary. And there's this purity in just existing and not trying to understand. Um, that's it. So that's before we get to the definition of font history, I have one more, I have one more guess. So, and then, and I, because I by necessity need to pull Dungeons and Dragons into every episode. <laughs> so uh, a phylactery, a, a phylactery is where a lich puts their soul so they cannot be killed. Uh, sort of like a uh, 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 Corcrux. Mm -hmm. So a frontistery is where someone would put their intelligence so that they cannot be uh, feeble-minded or dumbfounded or, or like have their intelligence removed from them. So it's safe, safely housed in an object of a front history. And if I it's ever destroyed, that. then, then they just like their, their consciousness just evaporates. You put your either. consciousness, intelligence, and your soul somewhere else <laughs> external to you. Are, do you even still exist? Are you still a thing? Well, in Dungeons are and Dragons, still? the answer to that question is yes, but you are undead. Buddhists would probably say, because you don't have a soul, you are a soul. So. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And front history actually is. It actually is. I mean, part of me thinks you're not that far off. Oh, um, no. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's always bad when I nail it by accident. You're talking to me, Chris. It's no, the same like, thing. It's an, abs like an abstract connection because it's, it's a place for thinking or study. Ooh. Oh. So it could be it could be one of Gary's walks. It could be <laughs> you've put your intel, you've put your brain into a, a quiet in a jar. spot to think. Yeah. Um, it could be a bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Or a magnificent library or mm -hmm. the car. This is my or... front history. Yeah. Now we need to actually figure out if we're saying it right or if it's front history or front front. Well. I think, it's some lunch. I think it's frontistery. Frontistery, like a monastery. Frontistery. Uh, I don't know. I because it's the E-R-Y. E-R-Y instead of A-R-Y? I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to eat some lunch after this. I'm going to put on my appropriate frontistery attire, which I guess is robes. How to and uh, go for a long, ropes. long run. We're watching um we were watching the Great British Bake Off, and now we've finished all of those on Netflix. And they're on Hulu. There's a Great American Bake Off, which is like, I mean, Paul oh, Hollywood's it? in it, so it's still okay, but it's a little weird. Uh, and the season we're watching, there's a um, there's a monk in it. Oh, Frontistery. Which Frontistery. Frontistery. You would think he would have an advantage on the bread baking thing, but well, when you're done with um, America, there's also Canadian, so. Yeah. What service is that on? Canadian TV. Canadian it's on, TV. It's on the. It's on <laughs> the. Uh, it's on CBC. It's yeah. on the BitTorrent uh, channel. <laughs> Actually, I think. Well, I don't know if it'll it'll work, but you can stream it off the CBC site. So I don't know if that's going to. I think be that I think that GeoBlocks outside of Canada. I think I've looked oh, for okay. it there before, because I because when I when I first was looking for the Daniel Levy ones. Um, I, oh, okay. I went there first and it said that you can Wait, Daniel Levy what? He's he is one of the hosts in the first two seasons. Oh really? Yeah. Well dang. I will have to find this yeah. somehow. We've we've watched those two seasons. We haven't watched any of the new ones. But the, you'll notice the first thing you'll notice <laughs> this is really also stereotypical Canadian, stereotypically Canadian. Um the first thing that you'll notice about um, the Canadian Bake Off as compared to the British Bake Off is how incredibly, terrifyingly 
disturbingly nice everyone <laughs> is to everyone else at all times. 100% like apps. And they, there's even occasionally like comments made like self, like, so, like sort of like <laughs> self-reflective comments about like how they're being nice to each other, like in the show, like it's, 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 you don't think it's a thing, but it's apparently a thing. Very, it's a very chill program to watch. Because even when things escalate and people are like rushing around, someone will be like, hey, Joan, do you need some help? And then like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and, and like it, and the British Bake Off doesn't feel cutthroat, really. No, I mean, no not at all. So <laughs> It, yeah. it like it would be remarkable against that is, is actually pretty remarkable. It, it makes, but it make the Brit the, the Canadian one makes the British Bake Off look cutthroat, like look really cutthroat. And I feel like the like challenges are, I feel like the challenges in the Canadian one are, are possibly more difficult at times. Um, yeah, Maybe they not. feel, they feel a lot more, uh, like traditional baking, like there's yeah. certain, certain things you need to nail rather than like your own interpretation. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I feel, I mean, I, I've watched a lot of episodes, our seasons of British Bake Off. I thought there's times where they're like, you have to make this thing. And, uh, and then like Paul chats with whoever is Prue or uh, whoever the host was in the later years. Um, and it's like, well, here's what I'm expecting. But like the contestants may or may not know that's what they're expecting. Yeah. And so it's like a, Oh, it didn't snap right, or it was uh, not as gummy as I expected. Like, well, maybe you should like specify that, you jerks. <laughs> I hate That's when Paul Hollywood couch. basically takes something like a biscuit or a piece of cake, and he's just like, it doesn't have the right crumb feel. And I'm like, why would you do that? <laughs> Can you imagine him like at a Starbucks, like getting a scone, like <laughs> handing it back? I do have what? to say that like the, the British Bake Off. Um, British baking show, whatever, hmm, um, yeah. has no fielding for, and that I feel like there's no real replacement for the levity that he brings. <laughs> I yeah, there he's magical, isn't he? He just comes in with his sweaters and his like, <laughs> fan, he's like in his own fantasy world and just loving every minute of it. <laughs> um, I don't know. I am going to harness him next week at my company thing where I'm going to meet people in person. I'm just like so terrified of this. I'm more terrified than I've ever been of any other in-person meetup in my entire life. And it's so get, bizarre to me. Get, get a nice, yeah, you better get a good sweater. Uh, I have complain t-shirts, feeling really good about that. <laughs> get, get a sweater with like, a black sweater with like bright pink flying pigs or something. What What is your fear? Like what is your, what are your nerves? This is a good thing to cover when you have a, less than a minute left. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, perfect. Uh, the answer is um, I, in the past, I've always known like how I belong in an organization. And at this one, I just have no concept of where I fit in this organization mm -hmm. and it's tiny. So it's not like I can hide that fact that I don't know where I fit. Um, I feel as though I am going to be like, there will be this meeting and then there will be Gary sitting there effectively naked at the table, you know? <laughs> They will be um, literally, I'm, I'm gonna be that'll be pain. definitely a scene. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.